For a long time I tried adding a Seiko to the collection, but the story kept repeating. Seikos came, then I always managed to find a micro brand watch that offered better quality, so Seikos went. Then this Black King Samurai was offered in a trade and I just couldn't say no. Now, a month into ownership, the time has come to put it to the test that will determine if it's here to stay or it will join its brothers in exile. And what better measuring stick than what I have already dubbed as being the best watch in my collection, the Wise Adamascus AD8. Their prices are similar and they're both divers, which means I can judge them objectively on common criteria. So this is the first ever duel on my channel. In the black corner we have the limited edition of one of Seiko's best sellers, equipped with everything the Japanese manufacturer deems as premium features. Sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, beta QC and a new approach to the Lume application. In the blue corner we have the standard version of the diver produced by WISE. While Seiko produced the limited edition Samurai in 8000 units, I believe that would cover the entire output of the Thai manufacturer for at least 5 years. As is the case with microbrands, everything premium about the Seiko comes as standard with the Adamascus AD8. In an effort to be as objective as possible, this duel will be judged professional boxing style. Each round's winner will get 10 points, while the losing watch will get points deductions for every feature not up to the victor's standards. Each watch will be judged on its case, crystal, dial and hands, bezel, strap, lume, fit and finish, wear, movement and brand. Let's go! The case of the AD8 is, simply put, in a different league than the Seiko divers. The angles of the chamfers, the play with the volumes and the shapes are not something you would expect to find at this price point. Not a single corner was cut in creating a true work of art. It was its case that gave this watch its surname. Indeed, the angular Thule construction seems to have been cut with precise sword strikes, but the sharpest of the katanas couldn't have matched the intricacy of the AD8. However, this case deserves respect, so the first round ends with a 10-9 score for the wise. Things play out the same in the second bout, the crystals. The Japanese flat sapphire's pure utilitarianism is best exemplified by the cyclops glued about the date window, while the blue diver's boxy crystal does a fantastic job at creating a demarcation line between the dial and the bezel. 10-9 for the tie watch. I really did my best to be objective throughout this duel. While I love the textured gradient, the originally styled silver hands and the multifaceted markers, I can understand they might not be everyone's cup of tea, particularly the dial. On the other hand, this is where this special edition samurai becomes special, as the dark grey of the dial, the different finish of the hands and particularly the green paint applied on them and on the markers are unique features of the Japanese watch. 10.9 for Seiko. I think it's safe to say Seiko didn't win round 4 but it was rather wise that lost it in an unpleasantly spectacular fashion because of its stiff, subpar bezel action. For all its flaws, some evident, the half a click back play, and some fortunately missing, the bezel's alignment seems okay, truth is Seiko's bezel action was always consistent and predictable.
will Seiko ride the wave of its comeback, registering more wins as we are approaching the halfway point of this battle? Well, no. Not only is the wise trap's quality way better, it is better while managing to look better too. The new streamlined Seiko strap is good, but at least half a point inferior to the Thai product. The oversized buckle certainly takes care of the other half of a point. The score of the round dedicated to Loom is probably the most objective in this head-to-head -head battle. In the end it comes down to how long the luminescence lasts in the dark, and despite the new Lumibright compound making it pop more in the daylight, the Seiko loses this round. The Thai Diver should score an extra point for the way they loomed the bezel, but 10 is the maximum score they can get. After analyzing the individual parts, the next couple of rounds are the most important in my opinion, as they reflect if a watch is more than the sum of its parts and if the wearing experience justifies the choices made by the watchmaker. Judging from the end product, it's really hard not to give the Adamascus 88 the win in the fit and finish round, as besides the construction tight as a drum, the finish applied to this watch makes it look at least twice more expensive than it really is. For all the things that could have gone wrong that Seiko has become notorious for, this particular Black Samurai is a well-built watch devoid of any QC flaws, but it doesn't offer any sizzle as it is, and some might consider it as a compliment, quite dull. And dull would be alright if it would serve a function, but I'm sorry to report that the Seiko watch is just too heavy and too clunky to get more than 8 points in the round dedicated to the wearing experience. Despite the flexible elastic band, I just couldn't find the perfect fit. Get the prong in one hole and 30 minutes later you feel its grip is too tight. Loosen it a bit and the heavy head of the watch seems to have become really determined in leaving your wrist. Legibility is great until you get light in a sweet spot that transforms it into a blinding torch despite the AR coating. On the other hand, the 88 is as smooth as butter and it seems to melt onto your skin. It goes to show form can gracefully coexist with function as the wearer soon discovers that pretty much all the things that make it look great are in truth fantastic choices for enhancing the wearing experience. A big contributor to the superior wearing experience of the Wise is undoubtedly the Miyota 9015 powering it. For watches that cost around $500, there simply is no better caliber than the Japanese high beat movement. Not only is it modern and reliable, but it's also slim enough to allow for divers under 11mm tall. On the other hand, choosing the same old 4S35 for a special edition is emblematic of how easy it is for Seiko to get away with anything. All they have to do is slap their name on a watch and that timepiece will outsell any better spec, better priced micro brand watch. And that brings us to Seiko's biggest win in today's duel. It's got nothing to do with the quality of this particular watch, it's simply down to almost 150 years of watchmaking pedigree. Truth is that these two watches were never competing. For many watching this video, Wise was behind even when winning. For 99% of the people looking to buy a watch, everything that the Thai brand crafted so meticulously simply vanishes, dwarfed by the name on the dial of the black watch. And that, my friends, leads to a unique situation. While the Wiza Damascus is the undisputed winner of seven categories and objectively the better watch, a too tight for its own good bezel and the brand's obscurity mean that this goes down as a tie overall. 
Of course, it's a tie only if you care about the name on the dial, and as expected, this is reflected in the price. So, in an effort to sway even those that claim a big name means big value, I'll calculate the cost of every point scored based on the smallest price I managed to find. WISE is currently offering a $70 discount on any watch on their website, taking the price of the 88 down to $529. Meanwhile, ignoring Seiko's lofty MSRP, I managed to track down a Hong Kong website offering the SRPH 97K1 for $585 plus shipping. This means that even with brand equity accounted for, you'll still pay a 10% premium for each point one if you decide to purchase the Seiko watch. In the end, it's really up to you. I believe that of the two watches featured in today's video, the Wise Adamascus 88 should be the watch you want.